Welcome back to The Exchange. Robots are emerging as the latest battleground in big tech, with Apple reportedly jumping into the space, scrapping its EV plans to go all in on home robots instead. Kate Rooney is here with more cars. Robots are all kind of the same, right? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of overlap there, D. Apple is the latest example of this move into robotics, but you've got Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, Google, and NVIDIA all competing now in robotics has been helped by some recent leaps in artificial intelligence. Amazon has been at this for about a decade as the largest producer now of industrial robots in its fulfillment centers. The play here, at least for Amazon, is to reduce cost and to increase speed with more than 750,000 bots at this point, assisting with about 75 percent of orders for Amazon. But Apple's reported entrance means more competition for Amazon and at least those at-home robots. It's got its Astro model, Still a wait list for that. It's not widely available yet, but the larger battleground appears to be in something called humanoid robots. As the name suggests, they walk, they sometimes talk like people. Goldman Sachs estimates could be a $38 billion market there. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong showcased a fleet of these during their recent conference out here. He announced NVIDIA's own robotics-related project called Groot. Elon Musk, meanwhile, has been a big backer of these human-like robots. Tesla's Optimus has been a key priority for the CEO and for the company. On a recent earnings call, Musk said it has the potential to be more significant than the vehicle business at some point. The private market is also booming. The biggest year for funding was 2021 as COVID really underlined the need for automation. Worth noting some challenges, though, in the M&A market in this space. Amazon's effort to buy iRobot was blocked by regulators. Many are turning to venture investments in some of these partnerships. Amazon, for example, has invested in one called Agility and then another figure is backed by NVIDIA and Microsoft. So, Kate, it's interesting here because they, the companies you mentioned, all the mega caps, very different reasons for building this. And Amazon has always seemed kind of obvious because they have so many of these warehouses and they're in the mm -hmm. logistics business. And I always thought that that was sort of coming a lot sooner than an actual robot in the house. Amazon has one, right? But it's, is yeah. it like real? Are they trying to sell it? I think it's 1500 bucks. Do you have any indication of how those have done? What's it called again? The Amazon it's one? called Astro. Astro. <laughs> so it's a great point. I think the logistics and fulfillment centers make a ton of sense. You could justify spending big on robotics if it's helping with speed and efficiency. So it's made sense for a long time with Amazon, where they may have an advantage is if they're able to transfer some of that knowledge over to the consumer side. I would say with Amazon, it's still unproven. And this is an expensive yeah. item. Apple customers are used to paying that premium. Folks I've been talking to, venture investors at least in robotics, have said Amazon's case in, in sort of the consumer side is not as obvious because they're not really looking for that premium customer. In most instances, people go on Amazon looking for a discount. Are they going to be willing to pay mm -hmm. 1000 bucks for an Amazon robot? Whereas with Apple, they may be. You're seeing that with the headsets and other premium products. Mm -hmm. They've proven that people will pay more for an Apple product. So that is sort of a competition here, but it, it'll be interesting to see when that is more fully rolled out, how it does and what it what it gets you, right? It might be yeah. able to, it's not a human robot. It's well, not going to do your laundry, which <laughs> would be nice. Or wash your windows. <laughs> Actually, I think I saw a company that's doing that, robots to wash your windows. But let me ask you, the humanoid robots, when I think about them, when I think about robot dogs, I think about Boston <laughs> Dynamics, right? They were yeah. sort of doing this very early on. Now that Mega Cap's getting into this space, where does that leave them? It's interesting. They were one of the first movers with, you remember, Spot. It didn't really have the dexterity. It was sort of, it looked like a dog. The artificial intelligence advancements have helped companies like Boston Dynamics. They've got more of like the military contracts that you think about. They really were an early mover. AI is a big part of this, where they have said in recent years that they have been able to take some of those leaps and move forward and get things like that human dexterity that wasn't a possibility when Boston Dynamics launched and really became that first mover. You could see this as a threat with big tech coming in. They've got obviously deep pockets and some of the machine learning advantages here. They've got those computer vision advantages. So it's, they are sort of these new mm -hmm. interests and uh, more competition yeah. with more funding. So it could it's, be seen as a risk, but Boston Dynamics really has been so far ahead of this and has all of these you know, government contracts. They've really been a leader. There's a few of those wow moments, like the robot doing a backflip. And then I think it was most recently Tesla's robot holding an egg like that. Uh, so a lot it's of advancements are coming quickly. Okay, Rooney, I remember, thank you. you also mentioned yes. it around GTC that somebody said, it's a, I, this is such a strong anecdote, that you'll, instead of typing on a computer, you'll interact with it. That's kind of what you're seeing with robots. You're seeing these more conversational totally. robots pop up as well. My kids already space. try to talk at screens. Uh, <laughs> Kate Rainey, thanks again.